Um, next, next up, we have, um, we have a man who was described to me by a French caver who couldn't remember his name. A big man, big voice, talks a lot, likes beer. Les Williams. Um, I'm not going to give you a, a slick presentation, but what I'm going to tell you about is the Mendip Hills. Um, this is uh, our most famous scene. I think on the surface, this is the largest limestone gorge in Britain, and uh, we're very proud of it. So what we're also very proud of on Mendip is the caves beneath. So first of all, uh, probably ought to show you where the Mendip Hills are, because you won't know. Um, there they are there, look. Look, an animation. Yay. <laughs> They're about there somewhere. They're Typically, I think about uh, 20 or 30 miles long, five miles wide, in a big S bend, finishing in, in the sea. And uh, back in the turn of the century, last century, I forget we're in a new one, around about 1900, there were uh, three open caves on the Mendip Hills. Caving wasn't really big. Um, I think people like Martel had just been over to Yorkshire and found some big caves there. Beat the Yorkies to it. Good old French. They didn't really come and bother us down on Mendip. Um, since then, we've uh, been looking around, and uh, this is the current state of play, at least I believe the current state of play. I know you can't make any sense out of it. Um, there's something like 1,800 sites there. They're not all caves, some of them are digs, some of them are springs. But you can see from that that uh, a lot has been found in the last 170, 117 years. So um, where did they come from? Well, what we're famous for on Mendip has been alluded elsewhere, uh, digging. They've all been dug open. Every single cave on Mendip, by the three that I showed you at the beginning, have been dug into through glacial sediments, as Frank mentioned earlier. Um, digging on Mendip is a way of life. It's, uh, it's almost a religion in itself. I know lots of digs around the place, and if you talk to any of the diggers in the Hunter's Lodge Inn on a Wednesday night, they're all there telling you that the next trip will do it. They'll be in. Two more skips, job done. So, uh, yeah, I'll see them there the following Wednesday, and they didn't get in, but they'll still be enthusiastic. So, uh, what we're famous for down on Mendip is engineering. Yeah. That stopped them over at Hutton for quite a while. They needed to make that very safe before they could progress. Um, don't leave your scaffolding laying around on the Mendip Hills. You'll never see it again. Just some more shots showing us digging, scaffolding. Uh, I think this is in bone hole now. Um, it might not be. I'll put my glasses on, I'll be able to see better. <laughs> is it fairly? Right. Um, more scaffolding, more dodgy boulders. No one's dead yet. Our money's on Nick Chip Chase. <laughs> this is bone hole. This has got to be bone hole, isn't it? That's Ed Waters, isn't it? It might not be. Um, Bono, it's a very, very famous place. I uh, don't think they found any rock yet. It's all boulders. They're a long way down and a long way in, drafting. I think they've got scared and they've run away from it for a while, but I dare say they will be back. Um, there's another one of Bono. That is definitely Edwaters. I'd like to know what they're shoring up off of because I think you need something substantial to fix your scaffolding too, and it doesn't look like there's anything there. Uh, is that Verley again? Yeah, I thought so. And uh, it's probably Verley again, is it? Yeah. Right, uh, so scaffolding plays a big part on Mendip. As I've said, if you're a scaffolder, please leave your gates unlocked. Security systems turned off. We'll clear your yard for you. It's not a problem. You'll never see it again. Good insurance claim. Um, this is in Reservoir Hole. This is Jules Slither. This is right at a bitter end. That's possibly Mike Cushty's foot. Uh, Mike Cushty's been trying to get everyone to go and help him dig there. As you can see, breakthrough is imminent. <laughs> Just a couple of more skips and we'll be in. 
I'm reliably informed a howling draft and uh, a raging stream can be heard in the distance. Yeah, we've heard them all before. Yeah, I'm not going there. <laughs> this is a special cleaning up area, Pete, isn't it? Designed for after you've been in dual slither. And uh, I thought I'd show this. Uh, everyone's got to have a battery drill shot, haven't they? I don't know where that is. Fairly again, is it? I've got to apologise. I've stolen all of these slides from various photographers. I've mixed them all up. I have no idea. I've had to go through them and try and identify them, and I just can't sometimes. The drill doesn't look like your drill. Oh, it doesn't have a glove over it. Right, so what's Mendip done? We've dug. We've dug and we've dug and we've dug. There's nobody that's dug like the next cave. Um, these people, this isn't digging. These people really need to get a life. This is, <laughs> this is unbelievable obsession. <laughs> uh, this is probably most engineered cave dig in the world. Uh, I don't know the current depth. It's well over 200 foot down. It's very, very heavily engineered. Um, there's all sorts of things. Can you see the surface there? It looks amazing. Looking down the shaft. Massive skip. I think it holds half a ton at a time. Winched up. Platforms, all sorts of things going on. Look down a bit further. Lots of health and safety look. Handrails. Nobody's killed themselves down there yet, but we've had a close call. <laughs> down the bottom there, I think that's pumping down the bottom. Uh, they can't pump to the top. It's too far. They pump up to a stage into some containers and they pump up again and they pump up again to get it out of the surface. Here's the gate we fitted to keep Pete Glanville out. Illicit visits, naughty people. And uh, that's a, a massive undertaking in itself. I mean, just securing that entrance like that, the landowner required it. There's the winchway all the way up to the top. And uh, it's a massive, massive undertaking. Twice a week they're digging there. You can meet them in the Hunters, Mondays and Wednesdays. They'll tell you it's next week they're in. I um, think that's probably down the bottom of Templeton, going off into the, the side haven. I think that's a fixed ladder because somebody decided to fall off the one that wasn't there before. And this, this so taken with this, I'm not sure where this is in Templeton, but that just looks so, so tidy engineering with a winch above and it looks like something you'd come across in a mine and the whole the whole thing is just massively massively over engineered if they actually break through into big cave systems i have no idea what they're going to do with the rest of their lives <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we've been doing on mend it we've been digging it's the only way you can explore caves on mend it they're not there wide open to walk into um what I'm going to show you now is some of the caves that have been found. Um, what I did find when I went through this is actually how amazing the Mendip caves are. I've been caving on Mendip since 1982. You take them for granted. You forget actually how beautiful they are, how exciting, how sporting. Um, the photos should speak for themselves, but if I can think of some comments as we go through, yeah, we'll let them do that. Hang on. Oh, it's done it right. Longwood Swallet. In my opinion, probably the finest stream cave on Mendip. Just a lot of hard work to get there. Yeah, I'm not sure I fit through there anymore. Last time I went, it was a little snug. I'm not rushing back. But uh, fabulous cave, Longwood. Um, with stacks of potential still. Um, people aren't pushing at the end of it. It's very, very hard work to get there. A lot of work, but it is a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous cave. Um, the most well-known cave probably on the Mendips, Swildens Hole. The most extendable cave, its reputation for many, many years. Uh, 9.1 kilometres of passage, longest cave in the Mendips. For many years, the deepest cave on the Mendips, uh, over 500 feet down to the terminal sump below the entrance. Um, we've been badly let down there by the divers who just aren't doing it for us, I think. Sorry, divers, get your finger out. Chris, where are you? Leave that other bloody Wigmore thing alone and get down there, mate. That's where it should be. Again, fabulously sporty. I mean, most of the cavers in this room have been in Swildens. Oh, you don't really need me to tell you how great it is. 
but we'll just go through. Look at that. I mean, it's superb, isn't it? Just down from the water chamber, I think. Um, the battery's going on this. Right, that's uh, Barnes Loop. That's uh, across the top of Trapman's Temple. That's, uh, I think that's uh, back at Barnes Loop. Yeah. I can get through there without getting my feet wet. 20 foot pitch. Everyone's favourite, I think. Um, Swildon's fabulous place. My favourite cave. Superb. On to GB Cave. Dug into uh, just before our 50 year cutoff, I think. Um, I think it was the same year that, uh, was it? Um, Hillary or somebody, I can't remember, climbed to the top of Everest. It was uh, dug into by two gentlemen whose initials make up GB, whose, whose names I've forgotten. But uh, they, they named it in a patriotic style because Britain was great. Um, GB is a fabulous cave, the bridge, that is a superb photo. Very, very difficult to capture that because of where you have to stand to do it and the lighting. That's uh, in the cave, beautiful place, beautiful. That's uh, Downall's Bat Passage, if it's not in Bat, I think it's Bat Passage. Um, loads to see and do there. Still, again, the end of the cave uh, is, is a dig. It's quite squalid. I think Jill's sliver, uh, underwater. But it's all right, it's, it'll go somewhere if somebody wants to give it a hard old push and a load of technology. Woody Hill Cave, one of the prettier ones over in the Fairy Cave Quarry. And these caves were all dug into for us by a quarry company. Bless them. And uh, there we see, uh, I think that's called the Banyan Tree. Superb formation. Very, very pretty cave. Elephant's Trunk Chamber. I can't remember the name of that. It's going to have a pillar in the name, isn't it? Again. Fantastic formations. Not really sure if that's in Withy Hill. Anyone want to tell me? I couldn't find out whose photo I'd stolen or where it was. Is that one of yours, Pete? No. no. It, who's that? Mark. Mark Berkey. I couldn't find it in your. Where is it? Oh, it's Hilliers. Okay, so just just next door. Yeah, I'll have to go there then. Damn. And we'll have an iconic Green Lake Chamber shot because uh, why not? Look at that. Superb place. I'm not sure I can get there anymore either. St Cuthbert's used to be the second longest cave on Mendip. Possibly still is. There's a lot of um, discoveries happened recently that may have put that into question. Very, very complex multi-level system. Uh, which again, superb formations. Every caver that's been down has climbed over their gowers. No one's ever really seen them for what they are. I mean, you just, it's a bit of rock. You climb up, look at it, aren't they beautiful? Just fantastic passage shapes. Big pitches, quite wet. And uh, yeah, fabulous, fabulous caves. All of them entered by digging. And again, take you back to the boys in Templeton, that's taken it to a massive extreme. But every week on the Mendips, there are I, probably 100 cavers underground every Wednesday night, just waiting to go around the next corner and get into all of this stuff. Uh, next cave, Upper Flood Swallet, fantastic place for many, many years. Very beautiful cave, although relatively short. Cave is beavering away at the end, mostly the MCG. Um, eventually, after a lot of work, they managed to break through. Unfortunately for the, their founder member, Malcolm Cotter, it was too late for him. He passed away only previously. Um, they got into a massive, massive, very well-decorated cave. I've not been there. Um, the way in was a series of squeezes. I'm reliably informed that I'll fit now. So I probably ought to go and have a look. Uh, looking at uh, the photos, I sort of feel that I probably ought to go and have a look, really. Uh, I don't know the names of any of them. Perhaps uh, people that do them, the names can shout them out. They just, to me, I just look at it and think, it's fantastic, isn't it? 
I mean, look, superb stuff. Pristine white, big passages. Can't, can't be mend it, can it? Who knows? It's a little favourite of mine. I must go there, that's superb, look at it. I hate you photographers, I just can't. It's just fantastic. Beautiful curtain. And that, you know, when I first saw that, I just thought, where is that? And it's just there, got to go and have a look. And I like that so much, apparently I've included it twice. <laughs> and this, I mean, the reason to go into Upper Flood would be, would be to go and see this. I mean, look at it. Look at this. Amazing formations. Very pristine. I think you have to undress to get there. I think very few trips go there. They're the pork pies, for those of you that don't know. I don't understand why they come up with these names. I'm rapidly running out of slides and galloping ahead, so more time at the bar, eh? <laughs> Frozen Deep. Where's Frank Pearson? I watched everybody steal all my slides yesterday during the talks, and at the end I heard Frank Pearson go, I don't actually have any photos of Frozen Deep, and I went, yes. <laughs> so we've all stolen our pictures from the same photographers, which is really, really annoying, because we all have the same pictures. <laughs> anyway, Frank, the Frozen Deep, fantastic. Reservoir hole, not far from Jules Slither. I think this is what Mike Cushy's aiming for. Actually, he's not aiming for this particular place. He's heading underneath it into another one that's even bigger and even more beautiful and even more pristine. This is the largest chamber in Britain. Just for some qualification statements from the people that were talking about how you measure a chamber. Floor area, as measured by a Yorkshireman. So it must be right because he would have been trying really hard to make Gaping Gill the largest. Not going to argue the point. This is something like 6,200 meter floor area or something. It is huge. The photos I've got, which um, Mark Berkey has taken, do not do it justice. Now, that's no reflection on Mark's photography. I have not yet seen a good photo. It is that big. It's going to need a lot of work to get a good shot to show it in its best. This is a side bit leading in. You can see down there in the middle, those column and the, the, the curtain that we were looking at just now. It's looking back towards the entrance of Reservoir Hall and the frozen deep chambers going off to the left. And then we'll just have another look in the frozen deep. Look, all the way into the distance. Can you see? I can see wildebeest marching majestically by in the distance on the savannah. <laughs> um, that's the end of my talk. I've finished more on time. I have to uh, have another little animation for some credits. Well done, people. Um, I can't tell you whose photos were whose, but they're all fabulous. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.